Hey guys, Aaron from Ironworks. Today we're gonna to talk about steam trap and steam trap testing and why it's important. Every two pipe radiator has a steam trap on it. The purpose of the steam trap is to hold the steam in the radiator until the usable energy has been released. At what point the steam is no longer steam, it turns back to condensate. When it hits the trap, the trap opens and allows the condensate to leave the radiator. There is generally only one style of traps we see in our marketplace on radiators and that is a thermostatic element trap. The thermostatic element is set around 200 degrees. So once the condensate drops below 200 degrees, the element contracts opening the valve and allowing the condensate to leave the rad. Once that's happened, fresh steam can come and take the place of that condensate and continue the heating cycle in the radiator. A steam trap will allow the steam to pass into the return lines. When this happens, you end up with a lot of problems in your system. First and foremost is you pressurize the return lines. And if the return line is pressurized, the air in the system has nowhere to go. You will have steam coming up the supply side and the return side into the radiator and all of a sudden it hits a rad full of air and neither side wins. So you end up with a radiator that barely heats at all. The other issue with it is the excessive steam impacting the traps can wear them out prematurely. And then the final and most expensive problem we run into with failed steam traps is your condensate receiver is always vented to atmosphere. If your steam traps are failed and you're passing that steam right on through the radiator back into the returns all the way back down to the feed tank, what's going to happen is you spend thousands of dollars heating water only to waste it. If water cannot be condensed in a radiator, you didn't get any of your heating energy out of it you therefore spent your money heating water for no reason. Once it gets to the condensate receiver, if the receiver is full of water, most of the time it will condense back to water, go back to the boiler and get reheated. If the water level is low and the vent is high in the receiver and the steam can escape, it's generally vented outside and you end up pouring steam directly to the outdoors, which costs water, fuel, and increased wear and tear on all your equipment. In order to test steam traps, we use a methods. My preferred method nowadays is with an infrared camera. The infrared camera will allow us to look at a steam radiator and see the temperature of the rad, the temperature of the inlet side of the trap, and the temperature of the outlet side of the trap. Alternatively, we use ultrasonic leak detectors. What these devices do is listen to the steam trap and you can actually hear it cycle. You will hear the air passing the trap when the steam touches the trap, you will hear the trap close. When the steam condenses and opens, you will hear the trap open back up. The ultrasonic is a very accurate way to test the steam traps. It does, however, take patience and time. You need to sit there through a couple of trap cycles and understand how the machine works in order to be able to test the traps like that. With the infrared, it is a lot quicker to perform diagnostics on the steam traps. I'm just gonna do a quick example here and we're gonna heat this steam trap up so you can see it. Right, there's the steam trap sitting on the bench at the same color of the bench. <clears throat> Now, as you can see, that steam trap is quite a bit hotter. It's 240 degrees, quickly dropping because we've removed the heat source. But this way we're able to tell from the color as well as the temperature reading whether or not the trap is passing steam. Using the infrared technology is a lot faster and more efficient, saving the clients money and giving them a more accurate read of which traps have failed in their system.